Hey there everybody, Eric from Outer Limitless coming at you today with another video. Now in today's video I'm out here at Bushcraft Wonderland working on my shelter system and well it's time to deal with my roof. Now in my shelter build I did build a frame to support a tarp and at this point I have a product here that I think is going to be just about perfect. Well and not just one product but actually two products here from the company Range Tarps. Now before we get too far I would like to say thank you very much to the people at Range Tarps who did provide these products for review. Now Range Tarps is a company whose products I found specifically on Instagram. They had been doing a whole bunch of marketing. I had been in the market for a tarp and things aligned just about perfectly. But two main things caught my attention. Well actually three. One is they offer nice camouflage tarps. That's the first thing. I really didn't want something that was going to be overly loud and draw attention, especially not here in this beautiful wilderness environment. Second, I realized pretty quick they had a massive range of sizes and that's huge because out here, well, I don't want too much tarp. I don't want too little tarp. I want something that's just about right and that's what you get with range tarps. A wide variety of sizes and that's going to work out very well for me. And the third thing is really durability. You have to say, I mean, if this tarp is going to live out here, it's going to be a little bit tough on it. Branches falling, maybe getting snagged, it's going to be sitting in the sun continuously, rubbing against logs and abrasion. It's not going to be the easiest life for a tarp. And Range Tarps is really promoting their overall quality, longevity, durability. And so seeing Range Tarps with those three main factors, the camo, the size, and the durability, I think these tarps are going to be an absolute home run for this shelter but there's only one way to find out and that's to get into this. So if you're interested in seeing a little bit more about what I'm about to get into, do me a favor, stay tuned. And so as I mentioned, these range tarps caught my attention for the three main factors being the durability, the different size options, and also the color here being camo. Now maybe camo isn't what you're looking for. They do also have white and silver, so not just the camouflage, but for me in this environment, of course, it's gonna be just about perfect. Now, the other thing is the sizes. For my shelter, and for this to be a, what I would call perfect fit, I really needed 12 feet by 18 feet. Now, there are a lot of sizes that kind of range around there, but there was not an exact 12 by 18. So the people at range were very gracious and sent me two to try out, test out, see what would work best in this environment, and then give you my overall impressions of the quality, the durability, the features. So that's what we're gonna do today. A little bit of a fit test here, and then we're gonna go through all of the features. So here I have a 12 by 20 tarp. This one here, nice and large, a little bit bigger than what I need in at least one of the dimensions and it is quite heavy. That's the first thing I'm gonna get into is the weight. These are not lightweight tarps by any means. These are the types of tarps you want when you're looking for serious durability, something that's gonna last. And when you're looking to cover something, it's not gonna be your so much of a camping tarp or a backpacking tarp by any means. And then this one here, a little bit smaller, this is 10 feet by 16 feet. So a little bit smaller and tighter than the dimensions I was looking for. However, I did build this with some overhang and my measurements accounted for the overhang. So my actual shelter itself should be completely enclosed by the 10 by 16. It's just a matter of how I want it to fit. Now I do have a few thoughts about this, but before I get into that in any more detail, let's break out the 12 by 20 and that's exactly where I'm gonna start. So here we have again, the 12 by 20 tarp, taking it out. The first thing is it smells like you've been spray painting with like clear acrylic spray paint, that like sort of just like heavy smell. Not a bad thing. That's actually probably speaking to the materials and here you'll see just nicely printed, has a nice camel pattern, looking very good. And this is not white. This is over 15 pounds. I weighed it at home, and this tarp is over 15 pounds. They reported at closer to 16 pounds, 
in their actual documentation online. So this is not gonna be a lightweight tarp. And this does luckily for me have grommets in very strategic locations. So every 18 inches has nice heavy duty grommets and reinforced corners. So as you see here, the corners nicely reinforced, a little bit of a plastic protection, and at the same time with the grommet punching through. And that's gonna help. I don't know if you're used to those crappy blue tarps, but those crappy blue tarps, I mean, when you use those, eventually these grommets do pull out. So at least on the corners, having the reinforcement, that's gonna be nice. Taking a quick look at the underside, you'll notice the underside does not have print. It's white. I think that's gonna be advantageous to me where actually as the sun is hitting this, it's gonna allow it to be just a little bit brighter inside my shelter system. Granted, it's got the camo pattern on the outside, but on the inside being white, that's gonna be nice. Now, usually with any tarps, I don't like dragging them on the ground. I try to avoid it at all costs. The size of this tarp, there's not much I can do. And well, bottom line is if range says their tarps are as durable as they are, I shouldn't have a problem anyway. And I can tell you through feeling this, there's gonna be no problem. So I will drag it on the ground and hope for the best. But as I mentioned, I'm not too worried about it. Just tying off a couple of the corners as I work. It's not like I have a second set of hands out here. So just tying off the corner so I can pull everything, start to get it into place a little bit easier, tying it off a little bit at a time. And if I have to adjust, not a big deal. Putting in some light loops and easy knots just to kind of get this temporarily cinched down. But so far, looking real good. I think this looks awesome. So now the tarp roughly in place, I can kind of see what's going on. So here again, the 12 by 20, well, that's just about perfect in this length. As you can see here, you know, tying up off of my support structure, that's gonna work out fine. And then this is basically on the sides here, carried by the long, uh, you know, roof member. This cross beam here, again, another place where I can lash nicely. And the fact that the tarp has grommets every 18 inches is working to my advantage, especially here where you can see just tying this off nicely here, working very well. And there are some intermediate ones that once I get a little further and I decide to finally tie this down, I can tie these down into place here. That's gonna work mighty nice. And all the way down to the edge, you'll see leveraging the corner grommet here, working well, tying it to this sort of pole here, which is on my overhang. So as you look here, you'll notice this is my wall and this is an overhang. And I did want to have just a little bit of an overhang for things like say I roll in to camp if it's raining and I gotta get situated, I can drop my pack real quick, take it off, keep it you know under the overhang. That's gonna work out pretty nice. Now eventually by the end of it, I'll get all these grommets tied off along the way 
help support this and pull everything tight. But in the meantime, on this side, you will see I do have a little bit of excess material, which I was expecting, not a big deal. Now I can do one of a couple of things. I can use this to my advantage, make another little overhang if I so choose. This to me, I believe, will be my exterior wall when everything's all said and done. So this is outside of the actual shelter here. But that'll work out just fine, like I mentioned. If I want, I can make a little overhang area. Maybe this will be some wood storage, and that'll be nice. It'll be on the outside of the shelter. Store some wood here, keep it nice and dry, and take advantage of the extra bits of tarp. But the one thing I can tell you is that it did take enough effort just to get that up and into place that I think taking it down from, oh, I would say night to night as I come out here is a little impractical. So chances are once I get it up there, it's pretty much up there to stay. So at this point, what I really need to do is check over the entire structure, make sure there's no sharp angles that are going to cause tears in the tarp. And I already know that there are a few, so I have to address that before I tie this up permanently. So as you can see, working nicely to get this in place. Still got a little ways to go, but I've worked my way all the way around, getting this nice and in place. I still have a couple on this side just to kind of get them to sit down so that everything sits nice and flat. But you can see here, and just to give you an example, this grommet here, no problem, looks good to me. I don't have any issues whatsoever but tarps with grommets always have me concerned because, well, for example, on this one here, you can see this mark right there, which is where the grommet was actually originally pressed. And now that this is under tension, that is sliding. And even more so on this one here, I'm concerned that this will eventually pull out. Is it okay for now? Maybe, but that's already daylight showing underneath there. If I was to push on that, that grommet is gonna pop out. And as soon as the backside of that pops out, that's gonna tear. This is gonna be my weakness. So unfortunately, you know, no matter how strong you think you can make a tarp with grommets, it is definitely not gonna be the case. These really do not like being under tension, but for this roof system, it has to be. So I'm gonna keep moving on and that's gonna be something I'm gonna to have to watch long-term. And so we'll go with this grommet here. You can see, hasn't been pulled on. It's perfect, no problem, set in there nicely. Now I'm not gonna intentionally go over tightening this and tensioning it up to damage it. I mean, the last thing I want is to have my roof system with problems. But I'm just gonna lash this up like I have with all the rest of these, and we'll see how this goes. I'm curious to see what happens on this one. And so now you can see, actually quite clearly, that ring right there. Again, where the grommet was originally pressed, but now under tension, it has slid and I'm just gonna continue to say, I don't care how good you make these, they will pull out and I'm curious, I would like to see if they were to reinforce all the edge grommets, the way they did the corners, the corners are so beautifully done, I bet you that won't pull out. It's a little more sturdy, has that plastic to reinforce it, so, I'd be willing to pay even a little more money for these grommets not to pull out. So again, that's just something we're gonna have to keep an eye on for the long run. And so here, just one final example. 
you'll see I literally just threaded this through barely even pulled on it simply made a loop slid this through pulled it down and unfortunately when I did that you'll see the grommet there pulling out so that is definitely going to be the weakness in this tarp the rest of it seems phenomenal I mean the weight of the material is great and even all the way down through the edges there's actually a cord which is fairly interesting and I'm not sure if this is typical for this type of tarp but you can see there on this end just a little bit of that cord sticking out now it seems to be somewhat of a braided or twisted cord that does run along the edge you can see it there right on the edge kind of sort of molded into place now the underside of this I don't know exactly I mean it's got to be some sort of adhesive that they use when they fold it over and then the edge just reinforced with that little bit of cord in there so pretty cool and overall the tarp does seem to be generally very durable And so at this point, I've come back to one of the angles where I think if someone was going to come through here and maybe going to spy towards the shelter, well, how well does that blend in? Not great. I mean, it is sticking out quite a bit. I feel like this camo pattern on the tarp has just a little bit too much white, and it's maybe just a little bit too much of a repeating pattern. The pattern to me could be maybe a little more spread out, a little more, and I'm not going to say randomized, but there are some areas where I think it could be a little bit improved in terms of the overall pattern. And just zooming in real quick, getting a little closer look. Now that the camera is zoomed in, that's more realistic to what my eyes see, just in terms of the focal length being a little more, I would say, like accurate to the typical vision of a person. So that's about more like what somebody would see if they were trudging through here and walked into this and said, hey, what exactly is that over there? And so what I was saying about the pattern is as you look here, you can see it is definitely laid out like blocks of a repeating pattern. So as you can see, going all the way across the tarp, and then it does change direction just a little bit directly in the middle. It's almost like they were uh, um, blending the top section and the bottom section together. But you can see very defined. So one, two, three, and then in the back, four, five, six, and continuing to repeat. So they don't exactly overlap, but at the same time, they kind of make a seam in a way and that just makes the pattern a little less effective. So as I mentioned, there is absolutely no way this is gonna be able to come down, so this is up here to stay. And I'm curious about a few things. We've talked about the grommets at length, so that's the first thing. But the second is, what about the overall durability of the tarp? Well, there's a couple places I think will be worth watching. For example, here I have this wrapped around a little bit of a hard edge. So we're gonna keep an eye on that. And as the wind pushes on this and tugs at it, and as the tarp itself ages, let's see how that holds up. So I'm curious about that. And a couple other areas you'll see here, right up on top again, pushing against the edge of this. Now I tried to round that out to the best of my ability, but it's not perfect. And in fact, you can see a couple areas where there's little things sort of poking through. So I'm curious how that's gonna hold up. You know, is that gonna be the weakness in the tarp? I guess we'll see. And then the corners, well, we've talked about the other grommets, but I'm curious about how the corners also hold up. So I'm gonna get a couple of these tied out and pulled. And that way, when the wind's pulling on this and tugging on it, we can keep an eye on it. So I'm not going to have answers anytime soon, but over the long run, I will definitely find out how this range tarp holds up. And so here running down the middle of the tarp, you can see this is an overlap of roughly an inch and a half. 
Now they ran all the way down from one end to the other. So you can see it is two pieces of material that they have seamed together. Now I'm not sure exactly how they do that. I would imagine there's some sort of adhesive in there and then probably heat and they sort of heat that together. I'm not completely sure and I don't know if I'll get the answer, but there is definitely a seam running all the way down and it looks to be very well done. It's very flat. There are no ridges or bumps or weaknesses in it. So from what I can tell, very well done and that should have no problem being perfectly water repellent. And just to wrap up my thoughts about the roof, I mean, I think at this point it'll do for now. I don't think this is structural enough for the winter, and especially once I start seeing snow loads, I will definitely have to brace this further. So that's something I can just work at over time. It's easy enough to sneak things up and underneath the tarp and lash it down from the inside. I could do the work at any time, so not a big deal. And in the meantime, the tarp's gonna work mighty nice, nice and shady under here keeping me reasonably cool. It is actually a little bit cooler under here than it is out in the sun. So that's a good sign. This bushcraft shelter is definitely taking shape nicely. And all in all, that was quite a bit of work. I want to say there were close to 40 grommets going all the way around the perimeter of the tarp. So again, at 18 inches, you can start to do the math and figure out how many you're going to have for any given size of tarp. And so with that, I have the range tarp 12 by 20 perfectly into place, tied down nicely. We've looked through all the construction and the features. Overall, what do I think? Well, there's no doubt that this 10 by 16 being a little bit smaller and a little bit lighter is gonna be a little more manageable. I do have to say, and it wasn't completely difficult, but having something like the 12 by 20, it starts to get a little bit heavy. Now that's not a bad thing. Think about it. You want a good durable tarp. You want something that's gonna last. And this is not your bushcraft or a camping and backpacking type of tarp. This is something you're gonna use to protect something or wrap it or use it in a number of scenarios. You could use this car camping definitely, but to me, this is not like your backpacking solution by any means. Now, the grommets, we've talked about it at length. I do strongly urge Range Tarp to look at that carefully. You're not gonna use tie outs like you would on a backpacking tarp, I get that. But could you use the plastic to reinforce each one of them along the way? Sure. Is it gonna be a little more costly? Probably, but at the same time, if the durability on the rest of this is as strong as it looks and seems and as quality as it really is, then the grommets are gonna matter. And the fact that they started to pull out leaves me a little bit frustrated. But we'll keep an eye on it and we'll see how it performs. The corners, no problem. And the overall thickness and durability of the tarp itself, I think is gonna be great. Now the placement of the grommets was absolutely perfect at 18 inches, where I was able to lash this and cinch it down in the entire perimeter. Nice, tight, tidy, nice and even. You can see here, and there's even a little bit of a breeze, this is barely moving. And the fact that the outside has the camo pattern and the inside is the whiter, lightish color, I like that. I think this works very well to actually leave a good amount of light under here. Just about perfect. It's illuminated nicely and it's comfortable. This is gonna help reflect a little bit of heat because there is sort of a white base to it. So that's gonna work also to the advantage. Now I would also urge the people at Range Tarp to work on their pattern. I don't like that obvious repeating pattern that you see. I think there would be ways to potentially do this to cut down on that a bit. Is it gonna take some work? Yes, is it gonna take some probably money to redo the actual pattern dies? Yeah, probably. Um, I don't know, that's just my suggestion. I personally don't like something that has an obvious repeating pattern to it, um, but maybe there's nothing that can be done about that. I am certainly not an expert when it comes to it. That's just an observation. But all in all, range tarp working perfectly. The fact that you get the wide variety of overall sizes to choose from is key. So depending on your application and what you're trying to do, you do have a lot of variety in terms of the overall sizes. For me, as you can see here, the 12 by 20 ended up working out just about perfect. Good overall length, good overall number of grommets tied down well. 
took a little bit of planning, but bottom line is if you know where you're going with certain projects, you can certainly make that happen. And with a wide range of sizes, the range tarps are gonna work out very well for most people. So bottom line is, I think the quality's here for the most part, just a few things to pay attention to, maybe a little bit of design work to change up that pattern, but I am very happy with this tarp and I am thrilled to see it on the roof. And so with that said, again, I would like to say thank you very much to the people at Range Tarp for providing these for review. Again, taking a look at the 12 by 20 today, am I gonna get the 10 by 16 out here? Yeah, absolutely. I have more shelter to build. This is only one side of what I'm trying to build, so this will be part of my planning process moving forward. So we're gonna see these Range Tarps being used again. And for the rest of you, I hope you enjoyed that. Thanks for stopping by. I hope you like what you saw and I hope you found it a little bit informative. If you like what you saw, please like, share, and subscribe. And as always, thanks for stopping by. Take care now. I'll see you soon.